Battle of Exegol. Casualties, 73 billion. The Battle of Winterfell. Casualties, f all. The Battle of the Volturi. Casualties, everyone who bought a ticket. The Battle of My Emotions. Casualties, ongoing. What do these battles all have in common? They're all f***ing boring. You know what's not boring? Melania versus Radan. Oof. Okay, my happy little onion lovers. We've got some Radan legs. We've got some swords. We got a top half of a body. We got a Melania body, a Melania head, and a Melania sword. And these are all pieces we're gonna need to make the Melania versus Radan diorama. So I'm just gonna get them glued together. There's our little man. I'm gonna have to be super careful in this episode to not drop these models because they're incredibly fragile. But I am clumsy as all hell, so who really knows? And these beautiful little pieces are once again made by the wonderful gang at Real Stone. Go sub to their Patreon and leave a link below if you want to print your own Elden Ring stuff. It's all fantastically designed, as you can see. Pretty cool. So first things first, I'm going to get these guys primed up and we'll start painting them. So I think I'm going to start off by painting Melania and then I'll pretty much be doing the exact same techniques across Rodan. So we'll do him after. But because she's little and my favourite, I'm going to start off with her. So I'm going to base all the gold parts with some dark brown as dark brown acts as a nice shadow colour for gold. So it's much better than using black. Cool. And I'm just going to move up a tone into a slightly lighter brown and just start mapping out some brighter areas on this. Cool. There we are with our browns. So now we're going to move up into our first gold colour. And I'm just going to apply these, this gold bit right into the centre of the lighter browns. All right, first gold done. Looking pretty cool. So I'm gonna highlight it now with some bright gold pigment, which will be this Auric Armor Gold. And just slowly start brightening these little gold areas up, mainly sticking to edge highlighting, and very fine points within the previous gold layer. Cool, there we go. It's looking pretty fine. I think it'll be a good idea to do a very fine wash on this metallic before we add some more highlights in. So this sort of oil wash, just gonna go over all of the gold parts we've just done. So we'll just let that dry for a second. Okay, now that it has dried, I'm gonna go back over these highlights again, just to get even brighter highlights going on. Now let's get, let's get her hair and her cape done because they're pretty much the same color. So we'll start with a nice kind of burgundy base, get us going. So now I'm gonna take some black, mix it into this burgundy and create some shadow tones. Cool, there's our hair and cape with some shadows put in. Now we're gonna focus on doing some highlights. So with some brighter Mephiston red, I'm just gonna start brightening parts up. Here we go, we're slowly starting to build up those colors, shadows to highlights a bit more. So now I'm gonna add some gingery goodness to her hair. So I've got this kind of dark flesh color, which acts as a quite nice sort of orangey highlight. See, keeping these strokes very thin and small 
It's really given some shine and contrast to these hairs. I'm not gonna add this to the cape because I kind of want the hair to stand out a bit more from the cape. And we'll slowly get that the more we build out these brighter highlights onto the hair. Now, we wanna oomph up the gingeriness. So I'm gonna use a very thin amount of orange to wash over some of this. There's her hair. Done. So let's move on to her clothes. So her clothes are kind of browny. So I'm gonna base it with some medium dark brown. Cool, so that's all her clothes based with that little mid dark brown. So I'm gonna start working in this kind of browny, grayy kind of fur color, which is the storm vermin fur, which will kind of be our mid-tone color. Cool, mid-tone in. Now we're gonna move up, add our sort of pre-highlight color. Ooh, my voice. Add my kind of pre-highlight color. I'm gonna keep moving up through tones, just making it brighter and brighter and brighter. And this one is Wraith Bone, which is a sort of light bone color. Cool. And I'm just gonna start blending between these colors a bit then, just sort of making glazes and mixes in the wet palette. Just slowly start blending these together a touch. <sighs> Look at this idiot. Spent 40 minutes glazing Melania and had his head completely in frame for 30 minutes. That's great professionalism right there. Okay, so we have her body done. All that's left to do is just do her skin. So we'll base it with some dark skin tones. We're gonna mix some dark blue into that flesh tone and just generate some of those cool shadows that I kind of like to do. Quite a nifty little technique in creating contrast in skin. Now we'll just move up a tone and I'll just start bringing in some more mid-tone and highlights. I guess a kind of pre-highlight you could call it onto the skin. Kind of the nice thing is, is this sort of darkish blue shadow gives her that kind of burnt look that she has on her arm, which is quite cool. It's a happy little accident. And finally some Kisler flesh, which will be our sort of main highlight color. And just accentuating those bright points. Well, there we go. That's pretty nifty. Nifty, what a terrible word to use. Christ, one of my 60. Anyway, pretty nifty looking Melania. Quite happy with how she's looking there. So my plan now is to basically replicate everything I've done here on her. And I'm gonna do that for the big boy. Mm -hmm. For the big boy, because he has pretty much all the same colors and I'll blitz through him and then we'll get to making the scene that they're going to be on.
So, we have our two little dudes done, painted up and dried up. So, the next step is to create what they're gonna be standing on. Now I have this massive block of wood here, and I'm just gonna map out how big I want this surface to be. And my thinking is, I'm gonna have Radan and a standing like there. I'm gonna have Melania kind of like up on some sort of rock here. So she's kind of like level with him. So let's get the width done. We've got it mapped out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys outside into my outdoor studio and we'll get this cut up. Oh, so welcome to the outdoor studio. As you can tell that it's actually just my table on a patio in my garden. So. We have this big block of wood mapped out. What we're gonna do is we're going to saw it up and cut off this little platform for everything to go on. Alrighty, now that we've got our base, we need to cut up some foam to start building it all out. So we have our mapped out area now, or the height of where things are gonna be. We've got Radan down here, we'll have Melania up here. They're kind of like level height, which is kind of cool. So now we've got to do is just start shaping out this foam. I'm not sure how to do that, to be honest. I think maybe it's just a case of just carving into it. Kind of like the idea that we have our sort of like slight overhang coming in sort of like that. So I'm gonna try and cut that in. So I'm basically using some of this acetone stuff, which with a couple drops will start to sort of melt away some of the foam just so I can get rid of these smooth kind of edges. And the cool thing is it's kind of making this webby look, which kind of suits that whole Caleb vibe. That's starting to look pretty messed up. Quite like that kind of like destructive look to it. A lot of mess around here now. I mean, it looks pretty wacky at the moment, but what we'll do is we'll start gluing some rocks onto it. And then once we've got some rocks glued on, it might start looking a bit more <laughs> natural. Because at the moment it looks pretty crazy. All right, we've got his, his little platform here, and I think we're gonna do kind of the same thing. So the acetone's done its trick and has eaten away a lot of it, leaving a lot of spots around. So I'm just gonna go around and start adding some of my own bricks into the mix. Right, let's all let that dry for a bit and I'm just gonna have a quick tidy up around. I just had a quick thought, whilst, it's, whilst the glue's drying, I thought it'd be a good idea if I just start dotting around some earth texture just to sort of build up a bit more natural vibes around and that can dry with the PVA glue. We'll lay it up, glued up, rocked up. Now what I do, just kind of leave that to dry for a bit. Looking pretty crazy at the moment. Right, we've got one landscape primed, nice and black. I guess it's just time to start painting it. We've come a long way, come a long way in this one. Let's get this sucker coated in some gray. What I am thinking of doing is all these little webs that we've got dotted around from where the acetone's burned through the foam and left this kind of stringiness. It kind of nicely represents that sort of red plant look that you get in Caled on the rocks, which completely unintentional, but a very happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. So I think it look, would look quite cool if I paint these little webs red. I should be careful not to break them while I'm 
doing a big old base of grey. It's starting to come together. Okay, now we've got the grey in. Let's start mixing a bit of brown in. And these are just real, real wet washes of these colours just so they can slowly start filling into all the millions of little crevices and cracks we've got going on. So we start building out some colour. Cool, it's looking pretty all right in it. Let's start getting some brighter colours mixed in. We've got this Balor Brown, which is kind of your sort of mustardy ochre kind of tone. So I'm kind of just doing this leopard spotting technique as they call it. I'm just sort of really watered down acrylic and just padding it around. It looks pretty naff at the moment, but once we come to do a black wash, it'll bring all these tones together. Okay, so we just need to let that dry before we add our black wash. In this little spray bottle, I've got my black wash, which is just very watered down black acrylic because I need to do a real big coverage area. I decided to put it in a spray bottle rather than a paintbrush because it will make everything a bit easier. Just with some kitchen roll to dab off excess, start spraying. Cool. Now, <clears throat> we're just gonna leave this outside to dry off. Hopefully it won't blow away. Ooh. There we go, black wash to high heaven. And it's looking pretty Kaled-y, to be honest. So, all we gotta do, get dry brushing on some highlights. So let's take this big old wide dry brush, get some light gray dry paint, and start brightening up some highlights. Voila. Looks pretty cool. Now I'm gonna start detailing in some of these weddings with a bit of red and hopefully start looking pretty Kaled-y because this is meant to be the sort of moment where it's the first time Melania blooms and blows the shit out of everything. I don't want everything to, you know, be crazy red, but I think a little subtle hints here and there of things will sort of add a nice bit of detail to this piece, I reckon. Now, I'll be honest, the acetone ripping this foam apart and creating this webbing is probably the best happy accident to happen on this channel because it has created such a cool scarlet rot look. Look at that. It just looks so scarlet rotty, doesn't it? Thank you very much, acetone. You've saved my ass a ton. Oh, fuck, that's good. <laughs> right. Fuck, where was I? Um. Oh, yeah. So let's just take a quick spin before we carry on and see how it's all coming together. So I wasn't going to do something like this, but as I was seeing the sort of like big sort of cracks on the floor here, not so much up here, but down here, it could be quite nice if I got some resin to kind of sit sort of deep within it. So it kind of looks like it's a bit swampy, which could be quite cool. I've got this epoxy resin. Well, they're loud. It's a bit better, a bit noise free. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna kind of pour a little bit of resin into each sort of crack here to make it a bit swampy. I think that'll look pretty cool. Never done it before. Let's see you're meant to mix this one-to-one. -one. Do you shake it before? No. Can I just pour it into these? Oh, no, wait, <laughs> to stir. I'm meant to stir for a good while. Almost completely missed step one. That would've been stupid, wouldn't it? So there we go, we have our little watery bits down below. So that will take a very long time to do its thing. Similar to the Radan diorama that I did at the end of last year, I've got all these little weapons, which I'll dot around, because it is a bit of a graveyard, as well as a battlefield. I'm just gonna make little incisions in the ground where I'm gonna stick weapons. I'm gonna use super glue to just go over the incisions so that the weapons will set in place. Cool, there we go. So what's left to do? Well, we need to get our fellas in place. Mm. 
last little thing I want to do is I want to make some kind of like little tendrils that are coming out from underneath Melania as if that's where the bloom is starting to happen. So to do that, we're going to take some clay. So these kind of little tendrils here, I'm going to make a bunch of these kind of emanating from underneath her. Okay, so our clay parts are in place. We just gotta wait for that to dry overnight and then we can paint them red. Oh, oh good morning. It is currently half seven in the morning and hay fever is kicking my ass right now. Barely see out of my left eye, but that's not gonna stop me from finishing this model. So it seems the clay has nicely settled in. So we just got to paint it up and then I think we're pretty much there, gang. Well team, oh, there it is. Finally done it. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. And I've never thought about how to do it. And I've got to be honest, the happy accident of the acetone melting away the foam and creating this really cool webbed scarlet rot effect is just awesome. And I did not anticipate that happening. So wonderful happy accidents do happen. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. I think the Radan has turned out better doing it this way than I did last time when I did the Radan Battle Arena diorama. All in all, pretty fantastic. This was a first using acetone on foam and building this kind of rocky terrain. I've definitely learned a lot from doing my previous one when I made the Limgrave walking mausoleum diorama and I kind of just overloaded everything on that. I kept this quite simple stripped back, only a couple little extra details with the weapons and the accidental webbing and also I'm really glad I did do this clay roots shooting out from underneath Melania as she's starting to bloom. That's kind of my idea behind it. I think it does add a lot and I'm really glad I decided to stick with it because I was thinking of not doing it, but glad I did. So all in all, it's quite an epic little piece there. So that is Melania versus Radan in the rotting Kaelid wilds. Thank you very much for tuning in everyone. Hope you enjoy my pajamas as it is quite early here on Monday morning. If you did enjoy today's episode or if you learned something, please drop this video a like, leave a comment below, tell me what you thought about this one. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and I'll let you get on with the rest of your days. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week for some more modelly goodness. <laughs>